guys, I want to show you a program I've used for about 10 years now called Kitty. And Kitty is a lot like Putty uh, because it is Putty. It's Putty. It's a fork of Putty uh, where somebody added a, a bunch of cool extra features. Some of the features are really useful and some of them are just cool looking. And so uh, let me show you those features. First I'll show you what you can do with Kitty and then I'll show you how to get it and how to configure it. There's not a whole lot of configuration, but there is at least one uh, configuration change I think you're really going to want to make. So uh, right off the bat, this is the configuration window. Uh, but you're not, after you get set up, you're not actually going to be looking at this window very often because what you're going to do is uh, use this thing called the launcher. Now look, if you look down in the right-hand corner right now, you don't see a whole lot. Now I'm going to double-click this launcher. Uh, and boom, down here, you got a, the launcher. It's this little icon here. And if you click on that, there are your connections. So, boom, got one open there. And I'll open another one here. That's mine. Um, I'm Ryan. That's my account. Now I'm going to open Betty's account. And there's Betty. So, uh, so that's how the launcher works. Um, and, and you may th look at this and think, wow, there's a, only a couple connections there. And, you know, vertically, I'm about halfway up my screen. That's because I'm on a, a Windows virtual machine right now, and I've resized things to be little so that you can uh, see these little icons, uh, see the taskbar a little bit easier. Now, if you're on a normal sized uh, desktop, um, you can literally fit, I, I probably got 40 plus connections before you get up to the top area of your screen. I mean, you can just have tons of connections. And you can, even if you go higher, you can kind of scroll up and down. So, um, so that's what the launcher looks like. And uh, you may have also noticed that this window has a background image. And that's uh, super cool. And another thing um, is that these windows have these little uh, icons over here like there's uh, Woodstock from Snoopy on that one and up here you got the the Roadrunner Coyote dude and you also see them down at the bottom now whichever window you open first you're gonna see that that icon like there's Woodstock there so those are some cool little uh, things you can add um, now, of course, that's just cosmetic. So, what are what's useful? What's a useful difference um, between this and putty? And here, oh, I opened the wrong one. Die. Go away. Let me open Ryan again. Um, and the first useful thing is uh, an option. If you right click on the top bar, you get a bunch of options. And of course, down here, there's. Uh, there's one called Protect, and that is one of my favorites. If you are running uh, something important and some kind of important task, um, like this one called Important Task, uh, you don't want to interrupt that. You want to go ahead and get on with your other work or go to lunch or whatever, but you, you don't want your cat to come and like walk across your keyboard. So you protect that screen, and then... And no input gets to the screen. It's totally protected, totally safe. And you can go about your work in other windows and then come back to it later. And maybe your process is done or you just want to stop it or whatever. You just unprotect it. And, and that's, that's it. So protect is super cool. Protect is cool. Uh, the launcher is cool, and then one other thing that I love about it is the the portability. So, and the images, of course, are are awesome as well. So, uh, and about portability, let me show you how to get it, how to install it, and then I'll explain how what I mean by the portability. So, to get Kitty, you can go to this website here. Uh, this tells you all about it, and uh, one thing you'll notice is the, the current version is version 
0 0.74 dot some other stuff. And he's got this note here, some information uh, about version 71 and higher. Uh, and the reason he's got that note is because uh, some people, I think, were upset because uh, the, the background images got, uh, that feature got broken, basically. Because um, Putty upgraded, and this dude had to upgrade his kitty stuff to work with the latest version of Putty, and somehow the, the background images quit working from 7.1 and higher. But, no big deal really, because you don't need the latest version. If you want to have the background images, nothing wrong with getting a, an older version. So if you go to download, it leads you to this other site, right here, Kitty. Um, and the one you want is the Windows Classic. That's what you, that's what you want in most cases. The portable one. Now I, I know I mentioned portability was a, a great feature, but I'm going to tell you how the regular Windows Classic is a very portable app. The one here that says portable, this is meant to run uh, with some other software called that you get. I think it's at portableapps.com, and it's meant to run from a thumb drive. And I've never used it, don't really care to, because, you know, on my work machine, I'm not even allowed to use a thumb drive. I, I don't think many people can these days if, they're, if they have security. So, but the Windows Classic version is very portable and it, with one little configuration change. So, um, so before you get that, though, and when you download it, when you click this, all you get is a little executable, just like Putty putty.exe, you're going to get kitty.exe. But like I said before, if you want the, the background features, you want to get an older version, you want to scroll down to the bottom, near the bottom here, and the last 7.0 version right here, if you want those background images, click that and download that file, or if you want the latest, get, you know, whatever you want. It's your choice. So, but before you download the file, I highly recommend that first you make a folder called Kitty. And then you put that, you download the file into your Kitty folder. And when you download it, all you're going to get is that executable file. And I know you're like, well, what's all this other stuff? Um, th these other directories get created later on depending on how you set up your kitty. And there's a, this is an INI file here. Um, so if you, if you didn't have a kitty folder, if you just put this on the C drive or somewhere, you, later on you might not, you, you might be like, what are these other folders? Where did these come from? You may not even realize that they're associated with kitty. So that's why you want to put it in its own folder, which also helps it to be portable because you can zip that up and move it around or whatever. So, um, so after you get it and you want to use some of the features like the icons, like Woodstock down here and the background images, um, right out of the box, those features are not turned on, but there's a very simple way to turn them on. And it's, uh, I'm bringing the website up again just to show you that the, the website will kind of guide you as will I. Uh, under graphical, if you click on an icon for each, uh, whatever that link said, icon for each session. So, so down here, he says to add these lines to your kitty.ini file. And your first question might be, where's my kitty.ini file? Because it doesn't come with one. So you just have to create a file called kitty.ini, and you put that in it. Kitty, and then icon equals yes. Um, but I do want to show you one uh, mistake that can easily be made in Windows. If you go here and you just say new text file, and you say kitty.ini, boom, I got a kitty.ini file. I can see it right there. It's called kitty.ini. And then you put your stuff in, and then later you're like, why is it not working? Um, that's because that's not really what that file is called. Um, because... Um, Windows, by the default setting, doesn't show you the file extensions unless you happen to have turned that on. So what I just created, whoops, was it looks here like kitty.ini, 
but it's really kitty.ini.txt. It's the text file. And it's not going to work if it's got kitty.ini.txt. So, so let's remove that. And yeah, I also I already have my kitty.ini file there. So let's look at the kitty.ini file. Um, and I've got three different settings in mine. And you'll probably want all three of those in yours. And you'll see right here, you know, I've got more than one kitty executable. They come with the version name appended to the end. Now you could rename this the, to just kitty.exe if you want. If, if you want it to look uh, prettier, you know. So, but I've, I've got both versions there, and in my kitty ini file. So, so in the kitty ini file, you want to put uh, icon equals yes, background image. That was for uh, like uh, the setting where, where you saw Betty in the background. So put yes. And then the important one is save mode equals dir. Dir, you're going to want that. Um, and the reason is... Uh, putty by default and and hence kitty by default uh, it, it saves your sessions all your settings in the Windows registry and I'm not a big fan of the Windows registry because it's not easy to view and troubleshoot or change um, and it's not a very not very portable if your settings are are in the registry and so if you put the let's see if you put save mode equals dir it's going to save all your settings in directories it's going to automatically create these directories um, once you start making your sessions and they're all going to be in your kitty directory here assuming that you made one and what's portable about that is just that you can um, copy that kitty directory to another machine or what is even better I think is to source control it uh, like I've got mine uh, I've got a dot git folder here git status mine is uh, source controlled in, in git so I made like a bit bucket repo and checked it in there and you can see um, I've made modifications I haven't checked in yet so I can uh, commit those modifications send it back to Bitbucket um, and I'm like I'm on a virtual machine right now just playing around um, and I could totally mess this virtual machine up and throw it away and start a new virtual machine and then I could clone my uh, kitty directory right back from Bitbucket and, and there's all my sessions they're right back in place so that's uh, pretty portable. Okay, so I need to show you quickly how I created the, the launcher shortcut here. Um, to launch it, you have to um, run the kitty executable and then give this dash launcher flag. So here, if I quit, I already had it up on my screen. Run that and boom, pops back up. Of course, you don't want to have to open a terminal and type that out every time. So you can just make a, a shortcut to do that. What I did, I just right click on the desktop, go new, and then go to uh, shortcut. And then I put in the information to, uh, you know, you can't see it here in this, this window, but all I'm doing is calling the PowerShell executable. And I've, let's see, I've got that info in this text file already. So, um, well, there it is. So I'm calling uh, PowerShell EXE. I'm telling PowerShell to run the Kitty EXE with the launcher flag. So, um, I mean, first make sure that's the path on your system for the PowerShell EXE. And that, that's all you got to put in your shortcut. And go away. All right, there we go. And hit OK. And then, you know, it... Since it's running PowerShell first, it makes it look like a little window here. And, and that's a way to get that uh, launcher on your desktop. So let me show you a little bit more about the, the settings. Now, if you have 
the background image is set to yes, then you will have this uh, right here. It says back and image. If you don't have it set to yes, this is simply not there. So now back in your session window, and if you've used PuTTY, you already already know this, but to edit any of these, you, you have to click on it. See, there's nothing in this folder, right? this area, this little white box here. Whatever's in the box is what you're working on. Right now, we're not working on any of them. So like, um, if I load Betty here, now you see Betty's in the box. So now any of the changes I make here on the left, under window, up here, any of these things applies to Betty. Um, so here's the background image area. You put where that image is. You want to change that to image there. And then you've got some cool options here, like the stretch plus is what I like. And stretch plus means if you resize your window, the picture gets resized. Um, some of the other ones are pretty cool too, like uh, the fixed in place one, or I guess it maybe it's called tile or center. Or those those are fixed in place, I think. Um, now when you when you do that, it's like wherever you open the window, the image is there on your screen. But then if you move your terminal session around, the image stays fixed and the session goes around it. Uh, pretty neat effect. So and of course there's a blueness here, like the image I got wasn't just blue like that. You go to your colors. This is where you would normally just make like like this window here is just plain solid blue. Um, which, whoops, is what I use most of the time because, you know, it's easy to see. It's easy to read. Um, that's just under your colors section. And when, when you're here, the main two things, the only two things I ever look at, default foreground, default background. And, and you just see numbers here. If you click modify, like background, this is where that blue is picked there. Foreground is going to be your text. And pick text color. And then back to the image, the opacity here is uh, how much you want to see the image. Now, if you go uh, the lower number, you see the image more, but it's harder to read, read your text, you know, actually do your job. <laughs> so you can go to, you can go to a really high number where that picture is just, just bare, just faintly there. In fact, I'll try that right now. We'll go 95. That's pretty high. Now, whenever you make a change, you want to click back on session. Always do this and do save. And um, otherwise, those changes aren't going to be saved. And then, of course, you can open on the launcher. You can just click open right here. It's going to open whatever. Um, let's see. I changed it. 95. Oh, yeah. You can really barely see Betty now. He's just... Uh, like a subliminal message. Let's try 90 instead. Load appearance uh, background image 90. I think that'll be a little better. Session save and open again. Boom! This machine is slow. So, um, so there now. Betty's just kind of just barely there. Maybe she does look better down here. I think that's an 85. Um, but again, if you know. Your main concern is probably being able to see the text on your screen, not so much the image. So that's how you make those changes. Um, and the rest is pretty much similar to PuTTY. And you got your like your SSH stuff down here where you want to put your key. Oh, I'm not in the right window, am I? I don't, if you don't have a window loaded, everything is empty there. So, yeah, the, the other main thing, if you're not familiar with PuTTY, is that you want to use SSH keys, probably. So, you're going to put that path down there. And, and that's that. Uh, also, you know, Put Kitty and PuTTY, there used to have, there used to be a button here called Clear. Because after, you, after you've loaded Betty, you're like, well, where did my other sessions go? Um, and I used to hit the Clear button. And it would clear this out, and then you'd see them again. But you can just uh, just wipe it out like that. Hit the delete key. I'm not actually deleting the session. I'm just deleting what's in this window. This window is just like, what do you want to work on? You, know, you clear that out, and then your sessions 
pop back so you can load. Now I'm working on that one. You're done working on it. Delete that and then it then they pop back down here. You can also play around with fold. You can put them in folders and they come up in folders um, down here on your launcher as well. So so that's about it for for Kitty. Now there's a bunch of other options. I, I haven't tried every option. I, I don't. There's probably some other cool features as well. Um, the main things I like again are the the launcher and the protect. Launcher and protect are the top two things for me. But then it's like an added bonus to get these little images. Those are super cool, and to have the you know the background image is kind of a neat uh, kind of like a show off thing there. So that's Kitty. Uh, definitely. Check that out. I think you'll like it. All right, guys. Fist bump. Ryan.